the second part of this week's Cats Whiskers TV. Later on we'll be looking ahead to the games coming up this weekend in the Elite League and we'll also be looking back on Premier Sports opening night coverage of the Elite League. But first, uh, we asked for, uh, for comments on our hot topic this week, conflicts of interest. This comes about after Steelers commercial manager Mike O'Connor was on Mansfield 103.2 on their face-off programme, basically saying that Mike Hicks, the referee, lacked integrity uh, after his third period performance in the game between Panthers and Steelers last week. Um, for me, an absolutely outrageous claim, um, because if you look at the facts, in the whole game, um, Panthers received 34 more penalty minutes than what Sheffield did, and also had two more players removed from the ice than what Sheffield did to, to their none. So how he can make such, such a claim is, quite frankly, beyond me. Yeah, yes. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm... I just, I just don't know what, what 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 you're trying to achieve, really, and and you're just making your your club just you're opening yourself up to a barrage of of ridicule and, and abuse. And yeah, here we are. You know, yes, and and we're the idiots that do it. But um, I just I really I, I don't know. It just winds me up that you know there's. It seems that, that people within that club just like to stir, like to like to say something, get it out there, and let people talk about it and discuss it like we are, unfortunately, because it gives them the airtime and, and gives them, you know, the satisfaction. But in, in my personal view, you're just making your club look more and more stupid and, and bitter and and just... Any kind of what are you trying to achieve? You know, you've got one. On one hand, you've got somebody, you know, having a go at a fan and and, telling, and offering the fan out into the changing rooms to go meet the players and stuff like that, and seeing what they'd like to say about what you said. And then you've got, you know, another member of staff basically saying that because of a ref, you know, private company <laughs> does shirt supply for for one team in particular, he shouldn't ref that 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 team. I mean, just. What? <laughs> what are you literally trying to achieve? You can't talk. First of all, you know we all we all have a goes at referees, but I mean, from my point of view, you know, as a league, you, you, you got to be punishing these people. They can't be saying you can't you can't come out and you can have your opinion, which is fair enough, right? But too many people, when 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 you hit a nerve on on these people that are employed within company within teams and as part of leagues or you know are involved you know, actually in, involved in ice hockey, when you touch a nerve, they do not like it. So you're not entitled to your opinion because your opinion's wrong. That's what they'll say. They'll say you're entitled, you, well, yeah, but you're saying rubbish, so just telling you the facts or whatever. Well, hang on. You can't say that and then, you know, act the way you, that you are. And I just think, you know, as a league, really, it, again, it just brings the league into, into just poor ridicule. You know, when we, when we talk about... That, um, that a team has gone out to a European competition and you know tried to put a show on for uh, the elite league as a whole, and then you come back and you've got somebody from a from a club just making ridiculous. I mean, if if I was the referee in question, I'd turn around and just refuse to do it, have anything to do with that club ever again. Because why should I? Because whatever I do now is going to be spotlighted. We seem to be seeing more and more of the these attacks. Uh, from within, uh, from within clubs to, to officials of the league, and yet nothing is done about it. Is it about time there were now some stringent punishments for for making these sorts of allegations? One word answer: Yes. Yeah, I mean, Aaron as ever has stolen most of my thunder, <laughs> but I'll ask. So I'll just ask one question: What's the difference between? <clears throat> The events we had a few weeks ago where I think it was Conboy, it, it usually was, manhandled a referee. What's the difference between that and what Mike O'Connor's done? He's basically said that Hicks is bent. Yeah, you know, he's, he's you know... I mean, not, even in, we, not even in private as well, he's put it no, on, on, yeah. on, on, in public. Allegedly. Allegedly. 
Well, no, he has. He, he said yeah, that. He, he said it. He well, said yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and well, he, he, he's called into question his integrity. Yeah, and it, it's you, you just you just can't be doing that. You know, the league has got to back the officials. I mean, we'll get on to the actual these conflicts of interests in the sport in a minute. I guess, but you know, I, I, I think there are almost two separate issues here. There's the the immediate one of what O'Connor has said and why, and there's the conflicts of interest. But I mean, why has he said it? Well, you know, is it because he thinks that he can? You know, is he trying to influence? Is he trying to influence whoever assigns the officials? Is he trying to influence Hicks? So that, you know, next time, rightly or wrongly, he thinks that if he puts a bit of pressure on now, Hicks will buckle. But I think it was when Nico... No, no, I don't think he will either. But I think it was when Nico Toman was in charge. I mean, that's years ago, I know. But, you know, you complained about a referee to him. You suddenly find you got him week in, week out. That's how you do it. Well, we've got a, a, a couple of tweets in about this very issue. Um, Scooby from All Arrow, mate, he, he says he basically puts it down to trying to deflect from a poor, poor performance and then a hashtag trying to do a Ferguson. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 could, he could be, but, you know, the, you know uh, Clan Van Doug, our old mate, he also said, biggest load of bull I ever heard. <laughs> Which, you know... And he you watches do. the show regularly. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of bull... So you know, it, it's, it's it was widely derided, derided, and I noticed uh, a view from the bridge were very quick to pick up on that uh, piece of, of footage mm. from uh, Mansfield 103.2 and basically put it out all over over Twitter because I think it, it, it had it, it, it had deserves to, it deserves to be out there. You know, yeah. you know the truth. You know, this is the old phrase: the truth will out. And mm. you know, you, you go out there, you you say these things, you should then be prepared for the fallout from it. Can you, can, you, can you imagine the fallout if, if then, say, Corey Nielsen or Gary Moran or Rick Strachan turned around and said, yeah, he said those things about a club, but nothing will get done about it because Tony Smith, the Sheffield Steelers, Steelers owner, is chairman of the Elite League. They'd be meltdown. Right, there's one thing, one word that I will use. Class. Right? <laughs> Class. What, what that person did from that organisation, because he is a part of that organisation, mm. is classless. Do you honestly think anybody from the Panthers would do that? Not for a second. There you go. It's a different, it's a different class. It's a different, way of, it's a different way of operating. I'm not being funny, but that, 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 that team are obviously in that organisation are obviously happy for members of their staff to go out there, say what they feel, say what they like, and as an organisation, they just take it or, yeah. you know, or whatever. The, the organisation, the organisation that we support, have a completely different, and, I'm, and I'd, I know which side I'd, I'd rather be supporting. Put it that way. They're happy to do it because they always get away with it, and all, you know, all of a sudden we're we're stood here talking about them. Yeah, we're we're stu- you know we're we're stood here talking about officials arguing with fans on Twitter. It, you know, it's they seem to work on the old adage that. There's, you know, there is no bad publicity. Yeah, yeah, no publicity. But two words for you: black eyes. <laughs> yeah, it got them all over the, you know, all over the world. Yeah, it got them all over the world because people were laughing at them. That's not good. I mean, of course, fans talk about this sort of thing all the time. I mean, there, there, there was enough accusations flown at Andy Carson when when he was refereeing about refereeing Sheffield games but that only came from the fans yeah never yeah never came from the never never came from the club itself uh, you know and fans will talk about that because that's what fans do yeah, yeah. but you know for, for that sort of thing to come from a club official I think is disgraceful well, quite if, frankly if that happened in any other sport right so let's say football for example if if a manager or any any member of staff came out and said that about a referee you know, use Howard Webb for example. You know, he obviously of, often gets calls the Man United fan, but by fans, mm. never by an, no. never by an official. Because what would happen? They'd get brought to the FA, and they'd get fined, and they'd get a touchline ban or whatever. But yeah. in, unfortunately, in our league, there is no such 
you know, there is no board, there is no, you know, sort of board where they review this this part this part of disciplinary or you know there's not that there's not that measure in, in things so it's a, it's an open market you know say what you want and of course it's a minority sport as well it, it's a small world you know, you, you, there's, there's not Just that ma- <laughs> there's not that many people around it and of course random random pitch makes a, a very very good point um, loads of conflicts in our sport but it's a minority sport so expected yeah. it didn't make a difference there though sour grapes and I think he's absolutely right yeah I mean these conflicts of interest are going to occur it is he's right he's, ent- he's entirely right that that sums it up far quicker than I'm going to do at the very least you know it's a small group people are People are referees, people are selling ice hockey shirts because they're interested in ice hockey. Nobody's looking at it and thinking, oh, I'm going to make a huge amount of money there. They'll make some. But, you know, so the, the, the two things will go together. It's like, it's like somebody from Sheffield, say, not buying from Crazy Kenny's because he's a Panthers fan. Mm. You know, it's a different conflict of interest. It's like... It's got a Sheffield postcode thing, balance, isn't it? Clutching at straws there. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's it's like let's say, oh, having a league that are run by owners. It, it's like Neil Black owning yeah, us and Brayett. I mean, again, all oh, the people will be screaming bias. He runs them as two very, very separate companies. But it, it is it is the same, and you know when. Coventry owned Hull for a season, two seasons. So there, it's it's as much I think about perception as it is actual fact. It's it's like when you know when we got Carson refereeing Panthers games. You know, it's oh you know it's like you know he he was whether he was any more or less fair didn't actually matter. It was the oh it's Carson. He hates us. That's his fault. But again, it, but it's it's exactly as Owen says as well. It's when it makes that step from the fans to the club. You name me another sport where the comments that we've seen this week and any number of times in the past would be allowed. They wouldn't be allowed in football. They wouldn't be allowed in any sport. I was I was desperately clutching for a. Cricket, yeah. You can name well, any well, look, 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 look what's happened in cricket, Michael where Michael Clark has said to Jimmy Anderson, yeah, yeah. I'm going to break your, your oh, arm. Yeah. It was picked up by the stunt camera, loses 20% of his match fee instantly. Yeah. And that's the, sort of, that's the sort of thing we need. And not that there's that sort of money floating around British ice hockey, but there's got to be some sort of punishment. Right, yeah, but yes, it's a minority sport and all that lot. So uh, yes, there are conflicts, but that doesn't stop you from having rules and regulations and setting an example. Whether you're, you know, you're a multi-billion from within the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (coughs) When whether you're a multi-million billion pound sport or whether you're, you know, only getting in a hundred grand, it doesn't matter. It's about having a standard as a league. You know, and everybody's got to got to go into that standard. But you know, just quickly on the Andy Carson thing, I'm pretty sure that you know he was defended by somebody within the Sheffield Steelers saying that no, he wasn't a season ticket holder and all that lot. So they were very quick to you know defend and put that out there when somebody was having to go at you know them sort of thing. But then when it's you know a member of their organisation doing the you know putting it out there, it's totally different isn't it but I mean you know will, will, will anything come of it I don't know you'll never see but the thing is that you're attacking one individual you know you're not attacking a, a group a team an organisation players you know as, as numerous people you're attacking one person that gets enough grief as it is and will probably not be given the chance to defend himself or say anything in reply because knowing our look he'll probably get fined you know, because, oh, well, you don't say anything, you know. It's just pathetic. If he does come out and defend himself, then he's, you know, there are, there'll be people out there who say he's in the wrong because he's risen to it. He shouldn't rise to it. And no, he shouldn't. But then again, he shouldn't have to put up with it in the first place. Yeah. I think, I think we'll wrap this up, though. Give the final a bit, word. bit, of, a, bit yeah. of a light-hearted yeah. look. Final word to Tina Taylor, who says that with how late Panthers shirts were this year, Hicks should be given as a penalty shot every year, so think on Mike. <laughs>
going to review Premier Sports live Elite League coverage from Saturday night where the uh, Blaze took on the Giants. Um, I watched the uh, coverage back on Sunday because uh, I recorded it. I, I was very, very impressed. I actually liked the way that they had the highlights on first before the game. So they actually covered all, all the previous week's goals and highlights, then went, went into the game. But Ben Olsen was an excellent summariser, co-commentator. I was really impressed with Aaron Murphy as the, as the commentator. He sort of seemed to bring a sort of fresh outlook to the to the commentary and to the and to the game. I liked his enthusiasm as well. Um, not too keen on him saying Premier Sports home of hockey every five minutes, but <laughs> but you know as a, you've got you've got to, you've got to advertise it. You've got to advertise it. But overall, I. I, I I was really impressed. I liked the fact that they used multiple camera angles on the game. Um, uh, Paul Wheeler was close down by ringside. He, he was doing quite a few interviews. It was nice that they were using someone from Coventry itself to to uh, to interview players and interview um, the coaches. So yeah, for me, overall very impressed. And I know you, you did manage to watch some of it. What did you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was impressed with it, especially for a first time. It, I, I did think that they could do with a bigger desk. Because you know he's, he's two blokes, you know, just sort of very like that together. And um, but I mean, if if they're thinking of doing a, a spin-off show, I think they'll give it to Ben Olsen's bow tie. <laughs> that was yeah. a work. That was a work of art. That wasn't. Yeah. But I tell you what, I tell you what, the best thing for me was, it was nice to see professionals having microphone problems. <laughs> all the, it was either that or all the way through that Mike Edner interview, the wo- woman out the back hoovering. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's good that the league has now got that exposure with a live game every Saturday night. I mean, it can only help raise the profile. Yeah, and I think it's going to grow, isn't it? Mm. You know, I mean, from a first point of view, I think nobody can really complain, you know, and make massive, oh, this is terrible, this is not going to do the league any good at it, all. Yeah. So I think it's, a, you know, from my experience, they'll, they'll sit down, they'll watch that, you know, and they'll, they'll look and make improvements. It's what you do with shows, you know, you'll grow it, they'll grow into it from, from now until the end of the season and, and including the playoffs. But so it'll be interesting to see next week's mm. or this coming week's to see, to see something, you know, see anything a bit different. But I think from the league's point of view, it, it, it's great that it's out there and, and um, it's a good addition t- to our league. And, you know, like you, everybody you mentioned, cracking jobs and I think they'll 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 really be good you know people for that for that program and um, I, I can only see it growing to be honest this this season you know next season who knows what it's going to whether it will even be there but I think from now you know week on week we will see that grow and really become something that you know the league and, and people can be sort of you know happy with and, and proud that it's you know we, we get to see that. Of course, Panthers are on this week, so it's coming from the big blue tent uh, with Cardiff against Panthers, which will be a 7 o'clock face-off, so that will be live on Premier Sports. I think 6.30, the show starts with all the highlights from this week. We did ask for your uh, tweets on it. We've got Tom Middleton, who, who said it was very good, lots better than Sky, but would be nice if all clubs contribute highlights, and Olsen's bow tie was brilliant, which I think is a... I, th- I, th- I think there were, in to counter that, I think from what I've seen this afternoon, there were some issues with some of the clubs getting the footage to Premier Sport. So it, it's yeah. not all about the clubs not, not getting involved. Yeah, I think there was, there was, there's, a, there's, there's, there's some issue, I think because the Panthers footage wasn't shown, but yeah. it's yeah. some issue to do with another, bro- another broadcaster who we, 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 we won't mention um, in the issues of fairness. <laughs> so, of course... Um, as we said, this Saturday night it will be Cardiff against the Panthers. And looking ahead to this weekend, seamless, seamless. Um, we may as well start with uh, Devils against the Panthers, and I suppose a lot will depend on how our injury situation is by the weekend. It will. I mean, again, we're going to be two players short anyway. Um, not the easiest, even you know, even the the way they've been playing. Not the easiest of places to go. Well, of course, they're going to have the momentum from a four-point weekend as well. Yeah, so, well, I mean, it depends what we get on Wednesday night, I think, and, you know, what momentum we've got going into that. But it's winnable, but I think it'll be a struggle. Never an easy place to go, Cardiff, to get a result, especially especially the tent. No, no, I, I agree with uh, Paul, to be honest. I think um, it's going to be backs up against the wall kind of uh, kind of hockey, I think. Um 
you know, like Paul says, we're still going to be two players down on D. Um, I think if we can scrape a point from that, being realistic, I'd be quite happy with that, you know. And in that sense, if it goes to that, you know, OT and penalty shots, if we can grab the two points, then I will gladly, you know, be accused of wearing a black and white striped jumper and a balaclava. <laughs> Um, but I will gladly take that, to be honest. Um, I think from the weekend in general, if we can get five points from this, from these runner games, I think we would have done very, very well. Um, stepping back slightly to Friday night, uh, Dundee Stars take on the Coventry Blaze. First of a triple header in Scotland for the Blaze. Um, so they'll want to get that weekend off to a bang. Yeah, could be a good game. You know, Stars... Form's a bit up and down at the moment, so they're going to want to, home fans, they're going to want to put a show on, get the two points. But Blaze, coming off of, a, you know, not at the best of weekends, but uh, Guthrie, Egner will always be getting closer and closer to, you know, to being that fully match fit. Could be a good one. Blazers' second game of the weekend is in Fife. Uh, Fife obviously coming off a 4-0 loss to the clan. Um, Blaze, I suppose, a lot depends on what happens on Friday night yeah. there. I, th I think if you look at the Friday and, you know, the Saturday, the, two, the you know, Stars and Fife, they've not had great results the previous weekend. Blaze didn't have great results. They, they are going to be two teams in, in both games that want to win mm. or need a win. So... You know, it's probably going to be the most boring games ever. <laughs> um, but no, I think I think they're they're going to be you know real feisty. Plenty of goals I see it, see in those games. To be honest, because I think it's going to be we need to we need to win this. You know, not not you know forget about what's behind us. Let's go and impose our game onto them, and let's go and win this game and try and win it. You know, as comfortably as possible. But from the base you know three games up in Scotland it's a great it's a great opportunity for them to actually you know all get together and really you know try and make make make, make yeah. a weekend and I think you know the yeah. fact that you know they've had the two people back Egna Guthrie yeah. that's I think they'll be experienced players that will that will be able to add so much influence going up there in the bus I think there will be there, you know they go come on lads this is a great opportunity for, for us to make a mark in this club so which way they will go, I, I really couldn't say, but I do think they're going to be good games. There's going to be lots of goals, and I do think both teams will be wanting to win those games. Um, also on Saturday night, uh, two informed sides, the clan at home to the Caps. I think current form would dictate that that, that ca uh, clan should win that game, but but we know now Caps are no mugs, and they're, they're, they're uh, in a decent run of form. Yeah, I think, well, hopefully not by then. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think Clan will win it, but I think Caps, they won't have it all their own way, definitely. You know, Caps, Caps will, will give them the game, but I, I can't see uh, beyond, anywhere beyond a, a home win. And, and the same for the other game you haven't mentioned, Saturday night. Home win, I'll go for home win. I'll, 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 just coming on to that, of course, final, final game is a ch uh, Challenge Cup game, Hull against the Steelers. And Hull, very interesting, they've done their uh, five days of discount, where the ah. tickets... The tickets go de go up by a pound, but starting at ten pounds today yeah. on Monday, yeah. uh, and then go up by a pound up until Friday, where they're fifteen pound on Friday. Judging by the comments I heard this morning, I know what their ploy is. <laughs> they get them queuing up when it's five pounds, but they don't actually serve them to when it's only about three pounds. Because <laughs> Sam was moaning. It was I, 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 I did see it on on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Bless him. Oh, poor little. Student. Well, yeah. But, well, he's a student. I mean, he ain't got anything better to do. Let's be fair. Right. <laughs> moving on. Moving on to Sunday. Um, and it's the reverse Panthers at home to the Devils. Uh, four o'clock face off. And again, I suppose it depends very. Don't say it. What? Don't say what. That phrase. What phrase? We've played them. Then they play all. Oh well, I wasn't. I wasn't going to say home and home series, but you've, no. Um, <laughs> no, I was. I was actually going to say a lot depends on what happens on Saturday night. I think. I think. Right. I think that we're going to come out all guns blazing that game. I, I really do. I think you're going to. You know, we're going to have Henley, Tuka back. Yeah. Fingers crossed. We might get some injuries back by then. You know. But I honestly do think, whatever the result on Saturday 
I really do think that's going to, the onus is really going to be on us and I do think we are going to come out and I think we will win that game. I feel, I feel more confident on that game just because, you know, I, I just think the other two games that we've got are just grinds out, try and get a result. I think the home game on Sunday is a great opportunity for us to really get out there and I do think we, I think we will. I think we'll prove a point that, that game. Um, I hope so. I just think we've got the number of bodies to go out and do that. Well, we're going to, obviously, as Aaron said, we're going to have um, Michaela and Hen- Henley back from their yeah. bands, which gives us a, another two imports, or a full, hopefully a full complement of imports that we can use, D- depend, hopefully, depending on what, what happens in the meantime, of course. Um, Steelers against Five. Of course, Five won in Sheffield the last time they was there at I Sheffield. Uh, now, it's on Sunday. And it's on yeah. Sunday. But, but both teams struggle on a Sunday, don't they? You know, Steelers do and, and Fife have, you know, been, we've had their fans saying you know, they, they haven't got the, the stamina, they haven't got the bodies to, to manage those, those two games. So, so. Boring 0 0 then. Have we said we've had a 0 0, but no, we can, well. There has yeah. been 0 0 before. Yes, yeah. yeah, just about 30 penalty shots. And <laughs> Yeah, I'm. <laughs> It'd be a barn burner now. You watch, yeah. Twenty seventeen. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm moving, moving on. Blazers' last game of the of the triple header that they've got there at Edinburgh Capitals. Who, you know, that that could be an interesting game. I mean, Blazers will be tired. It'll be their third third game in three nights. Caps were well, their second game of the weekend and at home, where they've been doing very very well. They have won their last three home games. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Caps picked up two points in that game. No, I think um, I agree on one hand, but then I think it depends on the Blazers' results in the previous two. If they've picked up four points there, I really do think they'll probably make it a six-point weekend. Um, just pure, you know, adrenaline and and momentum. Um, but I think that'll be a close game. You know, like you say, the Caps are no mugs at the moment at home, um, and you know they'll want to carry that on. So. I'm going to predict a, a close win for the Blaze. Okay. Uh, Hull at home to the Brayhead clan on Sunday night. Could be an interesting one. Hull, of course, beating the clan in Brayhead the last time they faced mm. each other last weekend. So, you know, dep- depends which Hull turn up. It does. It does. And and, and depends on the ga- games that both of them have the night before. I mean, I've, you know... Clan have then got to travel down. It's you know it's, it's no short distance, but I still fancy him. I think on that one. And then the final game of the weekend: Stars uh, against the Belfast Giants. Belfast's only game of the weekend on Sunday, uh, away to uh, the Dundee Stars. Could be a tough one for the Giants. That. Well, I'm hoping for a Stars win. Um, I think it could be in the sense of you know it's on a Sunday, you know. You've got to tra- the Giants have got to travel over to Scotland, you know, like they always have to travel anywhere, really, when it's an away game. But the just fact it is on a Sunday, it's, it's, it's preparation-wise, it's not ideal, is it, really, for them? Um, so from that sense, but you know, with the Giants at the moment, you know, it's hard to predict that when they're going to lose next, really, isn't it? Because they just seem to be picking up the results, but. You know, they're going to lose at some point. Uh, fingers crossed it's Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose Giants Giants will be expected to win that in the form they're in, but you, you can't write off the stars. You can't. And, you know, with it being a Sunday as well, you know, how many fans are Giants going to take with them? I mean, it's actually one, of, you know, talking about travelling, it's probably one of their shorter journeys, but it's it's still a fair distance. They've, you know, you've got to fly, they've got to go on the ferry. How, you know, how many fans are they going to... They're going to take with them, and, and and things like that do 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 affect teams. I I probably expect them still to come out with the, the points, but it'll be a tight tight game. I think. Well, of course, we will be looking back at all those games in next week's show, as well as looking ahead to the following weekend. We'll have a new hot topic as well, no doubt. No doubt. It'll con- be about Sheffield again. <laughs> no, <laughs> no doubt, controversial. Thanks, Aaron and Paul, for for joining me once again, and until next week, bye.